And today, I'm trying to see how we will present ourselves perfect in Christ Jesus. It's surprising to me when I see verses like Philippians chapter 1 from verse 21 in the Bible. He said, as for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. It's surprising when I see verses like John chapter 17 from verse 3. He said that this is eternal life. That they may know you the only true God and your son whom you have sent. Some of these verses, like Colossians chapter 1 from verse 28, that him we proclaim, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom so that we will present every man perfect, mature in Christ Jesus. Verses like this, I wonder why we have such verses in the Bible. In Galatians chapter 4 from verse 19, it says, my little children of whom I travail as in birth, our, our, our sister is here. She just gave birth to a princess. Paul is saying that he, went, he is going through that kind of labor so that human beings will look like Jesus. I'm surprised. I'm shocked. In Colossians chapter 3 from verse 3, it says you, you are dead and your life is hidden in Christ, in God. And when Christ appears, you will appear with him. Verses like this shock me. Why? We are not becoming more. We, we are not seeing the signs, at least significantly, in the church. It's, it's a surprise. When you see man, and the strides we've made in technology, in travel, in, in space exploration. Remember, that when I, I'm not too old, but I remember when we had mobile phones coming to Ghana. Hey, my brother at the time was working in STC. And because of the nature of his work, he had to be given a mobile phone, and it was a family celebration. He had a mobile phone and it was it was But today we have what what phone? Tom, what's what's the name of you are shy of your phone? Yes. What phone? What phone? Now we have iPhone 14. Talk to uh, 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 Prophet Justin and he will tell you more. We have mobile phones. You are in when radio got onto my mobile phone, it was a celebration in the world. Read you. Now you have a whole computer sitting in your palm. Human beings are perfecting their work. They are perfecting their craft. Businesses are being perfected. When mobile money came into existence, I said, me, mobile money, how? Today, I'm one of the first people. I'm, when you call mobile money, I'm, I'm one of them. Look at space exploration. One president said, we will take man upon the moon. In somewhere 1961, I think. JFK. By, by eight years, we saw Commander Neil Armstrong on the moon. Human beings are making strides to perfect. And he, he made one of his popular you know, statements that this is just a step for a man but a great leap for mankind. Today you are able to see Google Map because somebody went onto the moon. You are able to, they were, someone is just trying to give me, uh, uh, Mama, Mama Adomo is trying to tell me that, you see that thing called Google GPS. We we'll use it for the direction to the funeral. Because a human being went onto the moon. Human beings make strides. But why? Why? Myself have been battling with why is it we have such powerful verses in the Bible. But why when it comes to looking like Jesus there are excuses. There are misconceptions. Man has been on the moon launching satellite, a telescope upon satellite and all manner of things. Just last year December, one was Lunch, the James Webb, 
Then it was just put there with powerful shots coming to earth from space. Why? Human beings, we can't see powerful shots of Jesus in you. Powerful shots of Jesus in your character. There are misconceptions and there are things, mindsets that restrict us from becoming like Jesus. And today, I want to mention them. You know them. And me too, I know them. And we are coming to discuss. The first one is the mindset that, see, you need to live a balanced life. Oh, that holy, holy life, it will not take you anywhere. In fact, a lady told me that she went to an office and one woman told her, see, you have to start mingling. Oh, that holy, holy, you see, you have to start mingling, else you, you don't marry. So, the mindset that you have to be partially carnal and partially spiritual so that you live a balance is a lie. It's against the knowledge of God. It's either you are Christ-like or you are nothing. And we, we heard the nothing message. Uh, Satan, principality, nothing. If you are not Christ-like, you are nothing. It's either you are Christ-like or you are nothing. The next one is, oh, some people think that this Christ-likeness thing, it is your power. Oh, hey, you have to wake up. It's, uh, you have to just uh, you, uh, you have to discipline. It's all about you. It, it, it's all about you. But the Bible does not give us that understanding. In Philippians chapter 2 from verse 13, Let's read it. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 13. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 13. Yes. For it is God who works in you. It is God who works in you. It is not or everybody. Some people think it is all about you. You wake up and pray. You command yourself. Hey, read the Bible. It's you. It's you. It's all about you. Is false. For God is at work in you, both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Yes. Now, some people also think it's all about God. <laughs> but in the same Philippians chapter 2 from verse 12, he said, just as you have obeyed in my presence, now in my, in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out. You yourself, work it out. So it's not at all about you and it's not all about God. If there's anything called balance, it's in, it is this. That God is at work and you also, you are working. In Revelation chapter 3 from verse 20, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody opens, if you open, it is you who will open up. In James chapter 4 from verse 8, he said, Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. In Romans chapter 9 from verse 16, it's not, it says, it's not about him who, who will it or him who run it, but it is God who shows mercy. If there's anything called balance, it is this, that you are doing your part and God is also doing his part. What other misconception? Myself, I've had it. That this thing, that he said, it is easier to look like Jesus than Satan. And I know a lot of us, were la we were laughing in our hearts. We have the mindset that this thing is hard. It is not attainable. But the Bible is saying in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 48 that you will be perfect just as your heavenly father is perfect. What? This thing is hard. Though. That's the mindset. The mindset that it is hard. You think about it. It is hard to go to the moon. It is hard to fly in the air. Our sister is in Melbourne. Hallelujah. Technology. Man has devised ways. Cross oceans. 
Within two days, she's in Melbourne. It is hard. Aerodynamics, turbulence. When myself and Tawam were flying, we faced turbulence. <laughs> We are, we are waiting to hear from, and I'm telling us about turbulence and jet lag. You learn and you don't find yourself. Yeah. It is hard, but man has found a way to cross oceans. The reason America will, for a long time, be top of the world. You see, I was listening to the BBC concerning the queen's funeral. And the, and the reporter said, never on the streets of, uh, Web, uh, what's the name? Uh, the place they had the funeral. Web, Westminster, where? Yes. Have, have we seen security men so much on the street, just like the visit of the US president? Meaning that when, it is when the US president visits the UK, that's when they have security people like that. And it was at the death of the queen before they had such. What is my point? My point is that U.S. has forced to put man on the moon for the first time. They will continue to rule for a very long time. In the face of difficulties, people say you cannot. It is hard. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 13, First Corinthians, we'll read it. First Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 13. Yes. No temptation has overtaken you. No temptation, no temptation, no temptation, no temptation, no temptation has overcome you. Except what is common to mankind. Except what is common to me. I don't know. We are just in a room. And I don't know. And I don't know. Now I'm pregnant. Hey, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Who will you tell that lie? Who, who, which, who will you give that excuse? It is common to you. It is com- no temptation has come. Oh God. Hey, let's read on. And God is faithful. God is faithful. Tell your neighbor, God is faithful. You see, this is why on judgment day, you, you can't dodge. God, he's faithful. He calculated everything. Said your height, everything, and gave you your temptation, everything, set your persecution, everything. God is faithful. Tell your neighbor again, God is faithful. And let's listen more. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted... I was expecting an amen. Amen. This is the hope. If you have the hope that God is faithful, he will not tempt you beyond your capacity. Then whatever thing you are calling hard is easy. You see, there's, there's, we are told that there's water under the earth, uh, f- f- some meters away in the ground. There are machines push, crack. My place, they've destroyed part of our road because somebody is trying to fix a borehole. Your knowledge that God is, fit, your knowledge that there is water, you push till you touch the water. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Yeah, me too. I have battled with this. Now, if you say perfection, show me, show you show me somebody is perfect. You show me a perfect person, and then I will accept. You show me. Show me. Me too. I've been battling with it. Show me a perfect person. It was. Elijah, who was saying in 1 Kings chapter 19, from verse 14, let's read verse 14 and jump to verse 18. 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 14. Yes. He replied. He replied. 
I've been very zealous for the Lord. Me, I've been very zealous for the Lord. The Lord God Almighty. The Lord God Almighty. Me, Elijah. Hey. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. The, you, see, you see how the, the generalization. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. Torn mm-hmm. down your altars. They've torn down your altars. And put your prophets to death. They've put your prophets, generalize, to death. With the sword. With the sword. I'm the only one left. See, he said, I'm the only one left. Hey! And now they are trying to kill me. I'm, I'm, if I, if I, apart from myself, I don't see, even me, it's me that I'm trying so much to look like. Everybody, nobody is perfect. Verse, now let's jump to verse 18. Verse 18. Yes. Yet I reserve 7,000. God is saying, you don't see, you say, you think all the prophets have been killed. They have been, they've, they've destroyed, they've made void your covenant. You, you are saying you are the only, I'm telling you that what? Yes. 7,000 in Israel. I have 7,000. I have left 7,000 prophets. Yes. All whose knees have not bowed down to bow. All whose knees have not bowed. You think everybody is doing it. It's a lie. You think every, uh, this, everything, you think everybody is doing it. <laughs> you think everybody is doing it. If this one does not shock you, let's read Revelation chapter 14. When I read this verse, I was sad. Revelation chapter 14 from verse 1 to 4. We are reading all the verses. Revelation chapter 14 from verse 1 to 4. Yes. Then I looked. Yes. And there before me was a lamb. Yes. Standing on Mount Zion. Wow. And with him 144,000. 144,000 gentlemen. Who are this name? Yes. And his father's name written on their forehead. Yes. And I heard a sound from heaven. And I heard a sound from heaven. Like the roar of Russian waters. Yes. And like a loud peal of thunder. Yes. The sound I heard was like that of harpers playing their harps. Okay. And they sang a new song before the throne. Mm -hmm. And before the four living creatures. These are the people who are rejoicing with the Lord Jesus. Eh? Let's go on. Let's finish it. And before the four living creatures and the elders. Yes. No one could learn the song except the 144,000. Except the 144,000. Who had been redeemed from the earth. They have been redeemed from the earth. These are those who did not defile themselves with women. No, please read it again. These are what? Those who did not defile themselves with women. You think everybody is doing it. Finish it. For they remained virgins. What? They are clean and pure. Then God said, I want to take you as first fruit. May God find people among us as first fruit. Isn't everybody doing it all? Is your mind telling you that everybody is doing it? Have we finished? No. They follow the lamb wherever he goes. Ah. They were purchased from among mankind. Yes. And offered as first fruits to God. They were the offered. They were offered as first fruit. It's not everybody who is doing it too. Some people are perfect. To Jesus says, I'm taking you as my first fruit. It's not everybody. One of the things I've also battled with is, hey, so you are saying that there's no, but I see sin. I say, hey, so, can I be perfect? There's temptation. There's Satan. There's... Uh. Then I realize that perfection in Christ-likeness is not sinless perfection. It is true. It, in fact, in 1 John chapter 3 from verse 1 to 3, maybe we should read it. If I just read from verse 2 to 3. First John chapter 3, yes. from verse 2. Yes. Dear friend, yes. now we are children of God. Now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. There is a perfection that it is when we see Jesus, when we meet Jesus, that we will attain it. Uh-huh. But we know that when Christ appears, when Christ appears, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We will see him as he is. Please pause. 
There is a perfection that we can only attain in heaven. When we see Jesus, in that perfection, even your body will be perfect. You will not have to bath. You know, I read just within the week, somebody said, you have rushed, huh? you have married. Now see, every evening you have to bath. <laughs> see, when we see Jesus, we will not have to bath again. That, that is the amount of perfection. It will even affect you. We call it the glorious body. That is not the perfection we are talking about here. There is a perfection you can attain right here on earth. So yes, it is true. We are told in 1 John chapter 3 from verse 8 that the reason why anyone who sin is of the devil and it is the devil who has been sinning from the beginning. And you understand? The reason why the son of God appeared is to destroy the works of Satan. Yes. The power of sin has been broken but the presence of sin is there. That is why he said in Matthew chapter 26 from verse 41 he said, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. We just read the first Corinthians 10 13 that God is faithful. The power of sin is broken, but the presence of sin is there. Temptation is there. It is just like Satan. We are told in Colossians chapter 2, from verse 14 to 15, that Jesus has disarmed principalities, powers, made a public spectacle of them. But we are told in 1 Peter 5 8, that, hey, be sober, be watchful. Your adversary, Satan, is roaring like a lion seeking whom he may devour. The power, the keys of death and Hades have been taken from him. But Satan is with us. Perfection in Christ's likeness is not sinless perfection. The next thing I've battled with is I realize that we are not becoming more like Jesus because some of us, we are half baked. I use the word, we are half baked. You see, you have, you bake, but the thing is, and being it. You see, we are half baked. Temple of Apollos. In Acts chapter 18 from verse 24, the Bible says he spoke, to say, Akwano ne najumu go. But we are, to, let's read it. He spoke fervently. Acts chapter 18, yes. verse 24. Yes. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, yes. a relative of Alexandria, yes. came to Ephesus. Mm -hmm. He was a learned man. Yes. And thorough with the knowledge of scripture. A learned man. Yes. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord. He had been, listen carefully, he had been instructed in the way of the Lord. Uh -huh. And he spoke with great fervor. He spoke with great Passing with zeal. And thought about and thought about Jesus accurately. He, listen, he even thought about Jesus accurately. Uh -huh. Though he only knew the baptism of John. He only knew the baptism of John. Some of us, we, the reason why we are not becoming more like Jesus is because we, we are half baked. We are not fully baked. This is the Apollos, they were they took him aside. Aquila and Priscilla. And they taught him the way of the Lord more accurately. Let's read it. Let's finish it. Verse 26. Yes. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Yeah, after they had taught him accurately. Now, let's look at him now. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, yes. they invited him to their home mm -hmm. and, explained the way, and explained to him the way of God more adequately. Yes. When Apollos wanted to go to... Please, the what word is used there? More adequately. I like that version. More adequately. Adequate. Some of us, we are, we, the knowledge we have about Christ is not adequate. We are half-baked. Let's finish it. When Apollos wanted to go to Achaia, mm -hmm. the brothers and sisters encouraged him. In fact, let's pause there. In fact, this Apollos, he became so strong that there were even church members who are saying, that we are following Apollos. Hey, somebody who didn't know the, the thing accurately or adequately. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 4, we'll not read it to 5, 
Paul was trying to change their mind. That you can't follow me. You can't follow Apollos. We are both servants of God. Look unto Jesus. That's how accuracy and more adequately can do. Some of us are not becoming more and more like Jesus because we are not adequately baked, taught, trained. And myself, I've been there before. I've been there before. Why? Is it that we are not able to strive higher, higher to become like Jesus? Because of the cost. When you look at the cost of becoming like Jesus, the friendships you will lose, the, the networks that will come down, the people who think you are John. You see, some of us don't, you don't understand. When people born in the late 80s to early 90s say you are John, it means that you are John. You see, when you follow Jesus, People will say you are John. The networks, you know, the guy feeling will leave you. When Jesus is in you, what, what guy feeling do you want? <laughs> Jesus. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1.27. Christ in you. Christ. If Christ in you, all those Gaius things become rubbish. Philippians chapter 3, Paul tells us about his journey. In Philippians chapter 3 from verse 7, let's read from 7 all the way to, let's end somewhere around verse 10. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 7 to... Yes. But whatever were gains to me, yes. I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. Whatever gains were made to me, Popola popo, yeah, it's gone. You were the guy, it's gone. Pastor Tom, what was your guy name in secondary school? Yeah, it's gone. One day, you see, my friend, some of my people have been calling, say, "Hey, holy, you have to come. We are just close to your house." Hey, these people have been chasing me. When I was in SDA, they say, "Oh, we are at Osu." Show me Oxford Street and play. Oh, just come, holy. We know you have changed, but you just come. I went to spend some time at my sister's place. I'll go down the move close to Ogojo. There's some spot there. One of my colleagues have put a spot there. They say, Holy, you just come. This one is close to you. Ah, it was. I was in the middle. Going or not going. It was late. I finished talking to somebody. I was just thinking. Then I went. God is my witness. When I went, I didn't do anything they did. But when I came back home, I felt guilty. I bowed on my knees and I prayed for forgiveness. I didn't do anything. See, the guy's relationship, you lose them. You lose them. Let's finish it. What is more? Yes. I consider everything a loss. I consider everything as loss. Because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my because Lord. Because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus. Yes. For whose sake? For whose sake? I have lost all things. I have lost all things. I consider them garbage. I co- See, it's not that I've lost them. It's, like, it's still valuable. I've lost them and it is garbage. That I may gain Christ. You see, there are some things you lose. I say, Aish. There are some things you lose. You know, well, <laughs> this is a funny one. I left some of my clothes around and I, I mean, I'm so. Then, oh, to my surprise, they pack it back to my new home. Ah, I just put it in the rubbish. Is it not a, a, a good thing? I have to buy down the rubbish. Ah, after a new life. Praise God. After a new life. 
May you catch the prophecy. May you catch the anointing. <laughs> hey, they pack the thing back to me. I count them rubbish. May you count these things rubbish. Yes. Now I'm, I'm from uh, where? where? Where are the big towns? I'm from Ghana. Count them as rubbish. Where? Where again? Me? I went to where? Harvard. You? Where? Some, I, I, I said I mentioned some of the Ivy League schools for us. Oxford. I don't know Oxford is in the UK. Oxford. But it's a big school. Big school. Cambridge. Princeton. 90. Stan, oh, Stanford. If I'm Melbourne. Our brother is there. Let's hide them too. Count them as rubbish. You want to stand for it, so what? It's either you are like Christ or you are nothing. Let's go on. I consider them garbage. Yes. That I may know, that I may gain Christ and be found in him. And be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law. Yes. But that which is through faith in Christ. Yes. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. It's okay. You can read the rest when you get home. I'm, let me rush. The next thing is that people also misquote the Bible. Then the Bible says, don't be overly righteous. And they quote verses like Ecclesiastes 7 from verse 15. He said, hey, don't be overly righteous. You are too holy, holy. He said, you, you, God, even the Bible, they quote the Bible wrongly. And see, even the Bible says you shouldn't be over holy. <laughs> Some people also battle with the point that uh, Jesus is like any other character in the Bible. Why are you saying I should be like Jesus? There's Abraham, there's David. If I'm me, the person I love is Gideon. Somebody to say, yeah. But this brings me to my next point. My next. The second part of my message. Why Jesus? Why are you supposed to look? Why is Jesus exalted throughout the scriptures? Because of God's original plan. Jesus. In Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26. God said, let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness. We understand in Colossians chapter 1 from verse 15 that this is the image of God, Jesus Christ. He is the image of the invisible God. And we are told in Romans chapter 8 from verse 29 that those that God foreknew, he predestined that they will be conformed to the image of his son. He predestined. He predestined. God's original plan is that you, you were made in the image of Jesus. He said you are dead and your, when you become born again, you are dead with Christ and your life is hidden in Christ, in God. God's original plan. Two, because of the things that the Father has said, concerning, he, he has said concerning the Son, it is in Matthew chapter 3. Let's read Matthew chapter 3 from verse 17. Yes. Matthew chapter 3 from verse 17. Yes. And a voice from heaven said. The, a voice from heaven said. The Holy Spirit had descended like a dove upon Jesus. Then a voice. Which other voice? The voice of the Father. Yes. This is my son. This is my son. How can you call him your son if you are not a father? Whom I love. Yes. With him I am well pleased. You see, the person that the father is pleased with is Jesus. We, we, Jesus is the one we should look like because he is the one whom the father has exalted. In Matthew chapter 17 from verse let's just read the verse 5. But you see, Peter and Cole, they were confused about where to put Jesus. When they see Elijah and Moses, they don't know where exactly. Then the father had to tell them. Yeah. Matthew 17, verse yes. 5. Mm -hmm. While he was still speaking, yes. 
a bright cloud covered them. Yes. And a voice from the cloud said, Yes. This is my son. This is my son. Whom I love. This is my son whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. With him I'm well pleased. Listening to him. Listen to him. We are to be like Jesus because of how the father has, because the father has exalted him for us. Not only his original plan, but what he has said concerning his son. Point three. We are to be like Jesus because of the claims of Jesus. Hey. Jesus said in John chapter 14 from verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one, no one can come to the Father except through me. The claims of Jesus, it is, you can't compare it to David. He said, I am the way, I. I am the way. See, uh, Pastor Tawam, he has paved the way. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way. Maybe we will not read it. But Jesus, let's read this one. It is in John chapter 8 from verse 58. Yes. The claims of Jesus. John chapter 8. Yes. From verse 58. Yes. Very truly I tell you. Yes. Jesus answered. Mm -hmm. Before Abraham was born, I am. You see, the Pharisees, their God, or the medium to God, was Abraham. I'm saying it in, in inverted commas. But Jesus is proving to them that me, I supersede, I am higher, I am above Abraham. Whom you are calling your father. Me, I am. You see, if somebody tells you, it's, a, it's Rehoboam who said it. He says that his little finger is thicker than his father's uh, this thigh. It means that he's trying to show you that you've not seen anything. Me, Jesus, I'm bigger than Abraham. I'm bigger. His claims. The claims of Jesus is either you are Christ-like or you are nothing. Now, the commandments of Jesus. The commandments of Jesus. Let's look at the first one. It is in John chapter 13 from verse 34. John chapter 13 from verse 34. Yeah. John chapter 13. From verse 34. From verse 34. Yes. A new command I give you. A new commandment I give you. Love one another. Love one another. Now this is where we see the Christ likeness. Love one another. How? As I have loved you. As I have loved you. So you must love one another. So you must love one another. In John chapter 13, let's read, sorry, John chapter 15, let's read from verse 12. John 15 from verse 12. See the just as, just as, just see the just as commandments of Jesus. John, John chapter 15, 15 from verse 12. From verse 12. Yes. My command is this. My command is this. Love each other. Love each other. As I have loved you. As I, as I, as I have loved you. In Matthew chapter 28 from verse 20. Let's read that one also. It is a verse that will shock you. Let's read it. Matthew 28. Yes. Verse 20. Yes. And teaching them to obey everything. Maybe some of you have not seen the verse before. Listen to what it's saying. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Teaching them to obey what? Everything I have commanded you. They just ask commands of Jesus. In John chapter 20 from verse 21. As a church, we have memorized this verse. In fact, we are going to quote it. John 20 verse 21. Hey, there was silence in heaven for half an hour. 
Or you love to hear the voice of somebody. Please read. John chapter 20, verse 21. Yes. Again, Jesus said. Again, Jesus said. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. As the, as the Father has sent me. As the Father, as the Father, as the Father has sent me. I'm sending you. I am also sending you. The commands of Jesus, the, the just as commands of Jesus, make us know that there is nobody to look like except Jesus. How about at the end of the age? When we, when we resurrect and when our bodies are transformed, who will we look like? Let's read the first John 3, 2 again. First John chapter 3. From verse 2. From verse 2. Yes. Dear friend. Yes. Now we are children of God. Yes, we are children of God. You know, some people are men of God. Some people are children of God. And others are daughters of Zion. And what we will be has not yet been made known. Yes. But we know that when Christ appears. But we know, but we know, but we know that when Christ appears. We shall be like him. We shall be just like him. In fact, because of time, just write in your book. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 17. Just keep it. You see, when Christ appears and the dead rises, we who are alive will be changed and will be caught up with them in the sky. And we will forever be with the Lord Jesus. At the end of the age, you are going to be with Jesus. This is why he is the one to look like. But this brings me to my sermon. <laughs> How do we present ourselves perfect in Christ? In fact, I've, I've also been balancing the things. But the first one is that we must fix our eyes on Jesus. It is in Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1 and verse 2. Let's read it. Hebrews chapter 1, 12 from verse 1 and verse 2. Hebrews 12, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Yes. Therefore, mm -hmm. since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. We are surrounded by apostles. We are surrounded by the saints. We are surrounded by the men of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. Uh -huh. Let us throw off everything that hinders. Let us throw off. Let us throw off. Let us throw off. Let us put aside everything that hinders us. And the sin that so easily entangles. Yes. And let us run with perseverance. Let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us. Yes. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. Fixing our eyes. Fixing our eyes. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. In 1 John chapter 1 from verse 3. 1 John 1, 3. He said, what we have seen, we proclaim to you what we have seen and heard. What we have seen. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your thoughts, your thoughts, your mind, your mind. You see? <laughs> hey. Fix your mind on Jesus. Somebody, let's just say by mistake, something happened and then she gets pregnant. You see, everybody hey, is falling, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling. But you, we know you to be a virgin. But the amount of people you have impregnated in your brain, your mind, Yeah, judgment day. Hmm. Hey. We see it's a victim. But your mind, impure thoughts. Fix your mind on Jesus. 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 Fix your thoughts on Jesus. 
May the Lord deliver us from impure thoughts in Jesus' name. Let's read Hebrews chapter 3 from verse 1. Yes. Hebrews chapter 3 from verse 1. Yes. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters. Holy brothers and sisters. You, you are holy. Brothers and sisters. What do you do? Who share in the heavenly calling. Yes. Fix your thoughts on Jesus. Fix your thoughts. Fix your thought. Fix your thought. Fix your thought on Jesus. In Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Philippians 2 verse 5. Philippians 2. Yes. Verse 5. Yes. In your relationships with one another. Yes. Have the same mindset as Jesus. Christ. Have the same mindset. Fix your mind. Fix your thought on Jesus. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. Yes. Set your minds on things above. Yes. Not on earthly things. Yes. Set your mind on things above. Set your mind. Who knows the mind of God that to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Say, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. Yes. You must walk just as Jesus walked. You must take the full steps that Jesus took. In 1 John chapter 2 from verse 6. Is there anyone who claims to abide in him ought to walk just as he walked? In 1 Peter chapter 2 from verse 21, he said, this is why you were called. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example to follow in his steps. Walk as he walked. You are saying, what about the heart? What about my heart? It is in Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1. Yes. Colossians. Chapter 3 from verse 1. Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1. Yes. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Yes. Set your hearts on things above. Set your heart. Set your heart. Set your heart on things above. Where? Where Christ is. Where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Seated at the right hand of God. Today, I was just quoting it in my uh, Matai class. <laughs> we are doing facing life challenges. I said, Stephen, he gazed into heaven and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. May we gaze to Jesus. May we fix our thoughts on Jesus. May we fix our hearts on Jesus. And may we, we, may we walk as he walked. Let's be on our feet.